Hi folks, my name is Mike Pescott of Abacus Mountain Guides. This film's all about mountain leader rope work. What rope to have, how to choose an anchor, how to use the rope to safeguard your group members and yourself. But remember, it's emergency rope work. It's not planned for, it's just for emergencies. So your rope needs to be 30 meters long. If it's a bit longer, that's all right. If it's a bit shorter, well, you don't want to go much shorter. And it needs to be about eight millimeters in thickness. Uh, you can go fatter than that and that makes it much easier to handle, much grippier, easier to hold, but it's heavier and when it soaks up all the water, oh, it gets really heavy. You can go thinner than 8mm, but then it cuts in really quite a lot around your wrists, on your hands and around your back, so 8mm is about right. Keep your rope in a bag, have a little stuff sack just for your rope. Start with one end and just feed it into the bag. That way it's really easy to deploy when you want to. Also, have your Marshall knot tied into the end of it ready. That's the knot that you can attach your group members to. It's the loop that opens up and closes down onto that overhand knot. You can have that tied ready in your bag all the time. I'll show you how to tie one of those soon. Also, have your gloves. You've got to use gloves when you're handling the rope, when you're belaying somebody. So to make sure you don't forget, have them in the bag as well. First up, that far away from the end of the rope, tie a single overhand knot, just by itself, like that. Now hold on to that knot and point your thumb down the rope. Wrap the short end over your thumb and the rope, wrap it around three times. Then take your thumb out and put the end where your thumb was. Just like that. That's a brilliant way to attach your group members. They just step into it like that, and it pulls tight around them, up to the knot. It doesn't get too tight, and they can step out of it again really easily. You can also use uh, a loop, an overhand loop, to tie your group members onto the end of the rope. It's an overhand loop, it's just one of those. Your group member steps into it, up around the waist, but you've got to tighten it to slide the whole knot down the rope towards them. They can help you with this. It's completely secure, just takes a little bit more time to get it around each group member. So I've chosen my anchor here and I want to check that it's solid. Uh, to do that I'm going to kick it with my hand on it. And I'm trying to feel for vibrations that might be there. If it's a bit wobbly I'll feel it first. You could put a stone on top and kick it as well, see if the stone rocks off. And also check for cracks around here. You want to know that it's part of the mountain really, that it's a proper solid anchor. And that one is. To attach the rope, the rope's just going to go around the back of the rock like that and I want to make sure that the rope's going to stay in place. I've got this nice lip here that's going to hold the rope down on the, on the anchor, which is brilliant. But I can also check by running the rope sideways in the direction I'm going to use it. Now that's staying in place there, so that's good. If I wanted to use the same anchor in this direction, you see how the rope lifts off? That's no good at all. To attach the rope, I'm going to tie a loop in the end of it just with an overhand knot. And drop the loop over the anchor. And I've got a long tail. If your anchor is a tree or a thread behind uh, through a gap where two blocks meet, you can't just use a loop. Instead, you've got to re-thread a knot. So tie your overhand first, just singly, past the end of the rope around the tree and then re-thread that overhand knot so you end up with a double overhand knot with a long tail. With my 
the end of the rope tied onto the anchor, I then need to choose where I sit. I want to be quite close to the edge so I can see down and see where my group members are down on safe ground at the bottom, but I want to be back far enough that there's a bit of space between me and the edge to get my group members loaded onto the rope. So I reckon I want to sit with my tummy button about here. I'm going to fold the rope back at exactly that point, bring the bite back a long way and tie an overhand knot way back here. So I've got a great big overhand loop that I can get inside and it will go tight at exactly the right place. So I'm ready to safeguard my group members down the steep bit here. First up, I'm going to put my gloves on and pull my sleeves down. So I want to make sure that all my skin is covered up so I don't get hurt by the rope sliding around. I'm going to sort my rope very carefully into a pile to the end that's got my martial knot. They get attached to that end and I put that bit around my back do my body belay. After you've got all your group members down, you might need to safeguard yourself using the rope. Uh, that can be as simple as sliding down the rope, holding onto it, maybe a little wrap around one wrist and just slide down, just to give you a bit more security. For a classic abseil, you go sideways down the rope and you want to lead with your dominant hand. So I'm right-handed and I want to go that way. To get the rope around me, step over with that leg, my right leg in this case, and take the rope around the outside of your hip, across your chest, and down behind your shoulder so it does a Z shape. Make sure your skin's covered up for this, it digs in quite a lot. Go sideways, pointing in the direction you're going. The most secure way to abseil is using a South African technique. For that you need the two strands of rope going down the cliff. So the middle is around my anchor and the two ends are going down the cliff. To get into it you stand between the strands, cross them behind your back, bring them together again between your feet and then bring them up to one side just like that. There's so much friction with this but it's really comfy. So that was a quick run through summer mountain leader rope work skills. Now remember, on your assessment, we're not looking for exactly these skills. These are just examples of how you could do it. Whatever you do, if you want to do it a different way, just make sure it's safe, effective and efficient.